This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV. We're here at the International Workboat Show in New Orleans, and we're very pleased to be joined by Dre Wiersema, Product Manager, Caterpillar Marine. First and foremost, Dre, thanks for taking the time. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Excellent. Dre, I know the people who read the magazine, I know people who watch our videos know who Caterpillar Marine is. You're a ubiquitous name in the space. Uh, but if you could just give a description of your specific responsibilities to start us out. Well, I'm a product manager for a new product, multi-engine development. Been at Caterpillar for about 31 years now. Caterpillar itself is the world's leading supplier of marine engines and propulsion systems, all the way from CPPs to thrusters for tugs, offshore supply vessels, and, and, and anything out there. We have medium speed engines, uh, diesel electric propulsion, auxiliary gen sets, all the way down from 11 horsepower up to 20,000 in diesel and also in dual fuel. Well, specifically, I know here at the Workboat Show, and I know recently at the Europort Show over in Rotterdam, that you introduced a new product called the Multi Engine Optimizer, a product which I think you're very excited about. Um, can you give an overview of what? exactly the multi-engine optimizer is and why it should be of interest to anybody who's operating a vessel. Well, I'm going to rely a lot on the title because it, it does exactly what the title says. It optimizes the use of multiple engines on a vessel by providing advisory information to the existing power management system on a vessel. So we work with diesel electric propulsion, we work with mechanical hybrids, we work with batteries. And what it does is we load this box, this, this piece of information, this box with the performance maps from the engine, both from fuel performance, NOx performance, and also transient or torque maps mm -hmm. of the engines. Then we, we have a control algorithms that enable us to select engines, and not only select engines, but also select load points based upon a load demand we get from the vessel system. So in the case of Mayo, we would, we would receive a signal, let's say for four megawatt, mm -hmm. They'd look at the maps and we'd say, okay, out of this, this package of engines, out of this four, we think we should operate these two. But not only that, we also decide at what load point to operate engine. We call that dynamic asymmetrical load allocation. Mm -hmm. And it operates every engine at an independent load point, which is very unique, not, not normal for the industry. So you could have a bus where normally you'd have all four engines operating at 40% load mm -hmm. with multi-engine optimizer, Mayo, as we like to call it. You could mm -hmm. have one engine at 80%, one at 60 and one at 20%, all based upon what combination of load points, what combination of engines are going to give you the lowest possible fuel consumption, or if you're optimizing on NOx, what will give us the lowest possible NOx output. Obviously, it's an interesting concept. Obviously... Each vessel has an, a unique operating signature, mm -hmm. each vessel operator. Um, can you kind of walk us through the system, how it's customized to, to, to each application? Well, that's what's key about Mayo is Mayo, it's all about the load profile of the vessel. And what I like to tell people at Mayo is they'll say, well, what are the fuel savings? What is the NOx reduction I'm going to get from Mayo? And I said, it depends. And that's a horrible industry. Nobody likes the answer of okay. it depends, but it's true there's a very good chance that Mayo can save you nothing. Okay. So you go to a customer and say, what will Mayo do for me? If I look at their load profile and they naturally operate with their engines in the sweet spot, all my load is at 75 to 85%, there's nothing Mayo can do for you. But that's not normal. And there's applications where they have high variable load. Obviously, the offshore supply industry, wind, weather, current, speed, I have to get there fast. There's DP modes, there's... Uh, transit, economy transit, all these mm -hmm. things are variable loads where a naval architect cannot design the perfect engine package to always operate in the sweet spot. And that's where Mayo excels. So we've had pilots, we have the pilot we did with our first customer, we did a 32-week test. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the results, the average results from the savings from Mayo was 7.3%. Okay. Now, I had weeks there where I saved 0.5%. Okay. Because the nature of their load, they didn't do anything. I had another week where I sit, I hit 12. So it, it's, it's what we care about and what we tell with Mayo is we no longer care about individual engine maps. Mm -hmm. there, there could be engines out there that are better than Caterpillar's engines at a peak load point. Mm -hmm. But I don't care because yeah. that's not where we're going to be operating the vessel. It's what matters is what is the vessel's load profile and how can we best put together a combination of engines that's going to give them the lowest possible fuel consumption. So one of the things we have, we have a sizing tool. Okay. And we sit down with the customer and we say, okay, what is your load profile? And we type in anywhere from 10 to 
could be 200 if we want to, KW load points. Mm -hmm. We ask them how much time they spend at each one of those load points as a percent of their year. Mm -hmm. Then we ask them, well, what engines would you normally operate mm -hmm. at that load point? And then we select the engines and we have the fuel maps behind there and we hit calculate. And depending on the complexity, it will spit out the, the estimated fuel consumption for the vessel mm -hmm with mayo and without mayo. So there are times when I could sit down with the customer and I, I have no clue how the answer is going to come out when we go in there. Yeah. And he may put in something in there and it, it's a, actually, honestly, sometimes a little bit scary because you yeah. don't know what the answer will be. It may come out there and say 0.5% uh, and you say, gosh, I just don't think mayo is a good choice for you. Yeah. Other times you'll hit in there and bullseye. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're hitting big dollars. And what's amazing with, with mayo we're, we're, we're approaching some cruise vessel clients. Mm -hmm. We're talking 60 megawatt, 70 megawatts of power. Yeah. You know, do you know what 1% fuel savings on 70 megawatts of cruise power means in dollars? A lot. Oh, it's huge. It's, I mean, it's mind boggling how yeah. big the number is. Yeah. And so, and, and, and that doesn't even guarantee on a cruise that you're going to do well. It's all based on the load profile. It's sitting down with naval architects. Mm -hmm. It's sitting down with the owners. And, uh, and showing them the data, you know, we show them our optimization profile, we show them the electronics. Um, you know, we, we don't want them to be disappointed when they buy this. That okay. doesn't help us in the long run. I'll use a phrase that was coined by you, but I think it's very applicable in this, in that you were referred previously to the big virtual engine. Yeah. That you're not concerned necessarily in how one engine performs against another. Can you kind of explain that concept? Because I think a lot of the customers that you're probably talking to are looking at engine versus engine performance. Traditionally, and maybe less so in the last two or three years, vessel owners have typically, particularly in diesel electric propulsion, had four identical engines or maybe six identical engines. Mm -hmm. And with Mayo, that's no longer the best option. What we like to do is look at individual, unique combination of engines. So we will play around with two large engines, maybe two medium engines or two small engines, mm -hmm. all based on how that how that vessel is going to operate. Mm -hmm. And what it what it really is doing is we're creating a virtual engine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's we may have two thirty five sixteens, two C thirty twos, and two C eighteens, but really when you put Mayo on it, you've got a unique engine that's customized right to that vessel, and and. You know, you hear the word digital out there today, mm -hmm. and that's a big number. Everybody wants to have digital on their booth. They want to say something. But we talk about Mayo is digital with feet. Okay. You know, digital with feet. It actually produces hard value. And what a fun thing about this is yeah. we can calculate real savings. Mm -hmm. So we use the models of Mayo. We simulate what we calculate. We actually measure with we have two fuel measurements, so that mm -hmm. we're doubly accurate. We have the ECM, and then we have a mechanical fuel measuring device that mm -hmm. we put on each engine. So we're hard measuring fuel, but at the same time, we're doing a simulation on what, what they would have burned had they not had mayo. Okay. And so at any time, the, the captain, the chief engineer, if you get remote data, can come on and find out what did mayo do for me today? Mm -hmm. What did mayo do for me this month? What has mayo done for the trip? What has mayo done for me the whole life of the vessel? And again, you know, we, we work with the customers so that the calculations make sense. It's something that they can believe. If you could discuss what Mayo physically is, mm -hmm. and I guess the insights on selling this package to captains. You know, Mayo is an interesting thing to sell. Mm -hmm. and first, from a physical standpoint, Mayo is a cabinet mm -hmm. about a meter tall, 700 wide, 400 thick. It can go in an engine control room. It can go in an engine room. It involves about six to eight wire connections, okay. typically going to the power management devices, to the fuel metering, and then we'll have a Modbus connection to vessel data system. So it's, you know, nothing is simple when you talk about putting something on a boat, but it, relatively speaking, it's a simple installation. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, from there, um, we have to do some integration with the vessel data control system. Now, what's interesting about Mayo is Mayo has a different value to every player in the industry. Okay. So, for example, if, if I'm talking to maintenance people, mm -hmm. they want to know, how is Mayo going to help me on maintenance? Mm -hmm. And so we would tell them, it says, it helps you because we reduce fuel consumption and maintenance is often done based upon the total fuel consumed. Or if they're doing maintenance based on hours, Mayo tends to concentrate KW into an hour of operation. Okay. And instead of operating uh, three engines, it might operate two at higher load factors. Okay. So we reduce maintenance. If you're talking to owners, you know, 
Mayo, I'd say 85 to 90 percent of the value of Mayo is in fuel savings, okay. and that's 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 the bottom line. Yep. If you're talking to a naval architect, mm -hmm. designer, they like it from the standpoint it gives them design flexibility, mm -hmm. and they can advertise that they have a design for their customer that with Mayo and these unique combination of engines is going to be 10 percent more fuel efficient than an alternative design. Okay, you're very good with your time. It's a busy show, and I thank you for coming by. Much pleasure. Enjoy it. Appreciate you guys very much. All right. Thanks. This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV.